Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and the man behind the curtain is Dawn. Hello. Hello. So hello everyone watching us. Today we're going to talk about in the hoop quilting, which is one of my favorite things to do. I happen to have clear blue tiles, so I'm going to show you guys how to use these ones and if not print a template and mark it up as such. So we will start going through it. The first thing you have to do is decide what you want to do, <laughs> how you want to quilt this. Now on this one, I have two kind of lengthy pieces. Hard to show there. There we go. Two kind of lengthy strips. And you have to decide, do you want to fit it like this? Do you want to do one big piece, which case you'd have to turn it this way and get a different one? Or do you want to do the squares separately with different designs even? Oh, so, lots of options. Lots of options. That's pretty cool. One more, you can even do this. Look at that. Wrong way. Oh, we can't see that. Oh, Am I off? You're just off here. Just because I have it hooped. I moved it over a bit. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So you can even do this part. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's neat. So that's the first thing. Decide what you want to do. You could do endless quilting over the whole thing. You can do it. You better get him done. Oh. <laughs> Well, I can't do it. Sorry. Full service mood here. Pardon us, everyone. Yeah, just a sec. Well, then they can see over a bit where I have it hooped. Um, so there's a lot of ways of doing it. You could also do it by machine if you wanted to. I did a little bit of it, but I'm not very good at it and I don't want to wreck it. So I am not going to do that. So lots, lots of ways of doing it, but I'm going to do clear blue tiles. Now, if you're doing the endless quilting, I have my big, 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 big hoop going on here. If you're doing the endless quilting, it would be really helpful to have a, um, a template and then you can mark the centers just like what I've done here mark which way it's gonna go and then just go reposition the hoop this is where the dime hoop is just completely invaluable I love it hi. hi mom hi mom hi mom so I decided for this I wanted to do these strips that are the exact same. So the scullies on the other side here, they're exact same size. I wanted to do them in two different quiltings. You don't have to do everything the same. I did think really hard about doing the squares like this because they're half square triangles, but I decided against it. Now, the next thing that I have to figure out is how to quilt these center pieces, if at all. Triangles, I could put like a couple of triangle stitches on there and do that. And, but this one, the problem is this in the middle is 12 by 12. So I don't actually have a hoop big enough to do it properly. And I don't really want the quilting to go over cat and bat. So I'm not really sure what to do. I might just leave it. I might just leave the whole thing, like the, the center part and just let it stand on its own. I'm not really sure. Um, I would love like echo stitches or just lines that go through but I'd have to probably manually do those. And those are not, the, that's not going to happen. Stitching the ditch in the middle, all the middle parts. Well, that's not exactly easy, dear. 
It already has stitches on it anyways. Stitch in the ditch is this were two pieces of fabric. Yeah. So this isn't really stitch in the ditch. Plus it already you, you can't really do that. It already has applique scissors on it or scissors. Um stitches on it. So yeah, it, it took me actually a little while to figure out what I want to do. And then, of course, there's colors. What colors do you want to do? You can do any colors that you want, anything. I think on the top, I'm going to do a little more of an elaborate design. Um, I have like three or four to choose from. So, okay, what we're using today, this is this whole kit. It's a kit. It's from Missouri Star. Apparently it's unavailable at the moment, but perhaps uh, it'll come back in stock. But I purchased it as a kit. So the cat and the bat designs are from AccuQuilt people were wondering. If you have the dies, great. If not, it's an add-on for embrilliance and you can use the shapes and just cut, send them to your machine sort of thing. Just happens to be one of my favorite ones. And the circle, they had a different size, but I just used my AccuQuilt big to make the biggest eight inch and I like it. But all the fabric came from there. So clear blue tiles are from Kimberbell. The uh, designs are from Kimberbell. And the key to remember is whatever size you fit on, it says right there, four by 14. If you're doing different ones, make sure you write it down. See, there's a spare so you can, um, mark it down but i'm only using one for both so i mean that's fine so the next step once you figure out okay this is what i'm doing move the rest of them out all you have to do is mark your quilt now this is a blue chalk thing i, d I don't even know everyone always asks me it, you can find them in i think it's dritz you can find them in just about any quilt sort, but you can also use the markers. They're, they're kind of markers. They show up really well, depending on what you're doing. Um, water soluble or air erase markers. You can use, that is not the right one, but you can use friction pens. You can use, this is one of my favorites, just fits into my Cricut and it works as well but any chalk any marker just make sure that it comes off is is your big concern so once you do that you mark everything you can see let's match it up am i on okay don yeah i, I shifted it over so it's good okay so line it up and then you just simply mark it so that will make it a whole lot easier when you go to do the placement. And if you want to write the numbers in there, you can. And then the last thing you do is mark the edges. So then you can do the next one and so on and so forth. So I found it uh, pretty easy to do the parts that I'm doing. So to mark them. And you don't have to worry that, you know, everything doesn't fit. Um, I'll be doing like a partial one at the bottom. You could start in the middle and work your way up. I find it looks just as good doing it this way. So I have my big, 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 big hoop here. It's just easier. I really don't need such a big hoop. I could use a smaller one. But you know what? It saves me time for sure and it's just easy to do and i'm gonna stitch this one and we're gonna work on it and then you lift it up and you move to the next one which i don't have marked so whatever we'll uh we'll carry on maybe i'll switch it over to the other side so so far do you guys have any questions move to the right i thought you said i was right on 
Okay. Any questions so far? I have my warm and natural batting, and I don't like pins around my embroidery machine, so I used um, basting glue and flattened everything down, and I think it looks great. I did do a little bit of stitching in the ditch, and that really helps hold everything together, but you want it to be nice and flat. I did spend a lot of time ironing and the whole bit. One thing that praise about these um, Snap Hoop Monsters from Dime is, look, it's cutting my kitty cat in half. So I, if you were using a regular hoop, that would have a couple of big creases in it. Not that it's a problem, but it's just nicer this way. And then you can really see to place everything. So mark a few spots, mark the whole thing, decide what you're going to do in advance. It's all up to you. But if you're going to do one design all the way down that I, like I am, um, mark it all the way down. Another option I could have had for this one is to do these two pieces together as one. Mm -hmm. So, so many different things you can do. It's incredible. Now, you don't necessarily have to do Halloween designs for sure. I'm doing, this one will be a Halloween design and I think this one will be a swirly. But once we get over to the machine, you guys can help me decide. I don't pre-quilt in the ditch since I pray spray with 505 my layers together and it works fine for me yeah whatever works whatever works i needed to do a little bit of straightening so i just you know basically did that i need the practice so and i like my big huge walking foot thing it it's like sewing with a tank so it's just fun that's all judy quill also said that she likes uh, marking one row across that of yeah, whatever you prefer for it, um, I think, you know, whatever works for you, it doesn't matter. You can unhoop each one if you want, take it off the machine, unhoop it. Um, for me, I'm just going to be moving it down or across, whatever the case may be. Um, and I find it easier because you can just hang this hoop off the machine and move it. Um Remember all, the advantage of this method is no matching start and stop points. That is very true. And that is a very, very good point. It's a lot faster by a long shot because you don't have to match up an endless quilting. I mean, it's fantastic. When you do the next one, you need to match it up and uh, work it that way with the clear blue tiles and their designs even if i were let's see do this one and we'll do the next one they're independent designs but the way that they're set up when you place them they look like endless quilting the other thing that's really cool about these clear blue tiles is Everything is the same size. So if you want something to fit just, you know, on a square or you're going to put this at the end or something else, it'll look like it just flows. So which is really cool, really cool way of doing it. This, the design, the actual design will be like if it's a pumpkin, the pumpkin will be the same size on this one. Am I explaining that right, Don? Okay, so this isn't going to be an itty bitty pumpkin like they didn't take this design and shrink it down. So this is how you can quickly and easily make everything fit because and you don't have to stitch right off and whatever uh, because they're all the same. So it's kind of cool. Um, I'm using a border design. Now border designs are... Um, different from the regular designs. They're different sizes. If you have the right size, you can use a regular Kimberbell design with this if you want, but they don't always have the sizes. I couldn't find it in a couple of these. Keep in mind too, when you are on Kimberbell, 
the designs that are in blue are meant for clear blue tiles and they have the clear blue tiles and then the, the regular. So uh, if you're buying ones that are back, backed in the orange, like the little icons orange, uh, they're not set up for clear blue tiles. They're set up for like independent blocks, what you start with. So uh, there we go. So it's just easier, I think. Um, the packs, I got them all because, you know, that's the type of person that I am. I can't just have, um, I, I just can't have a little bit of it. I yeah, have to have it all. Piece of it, you have yeah, it. yeah. In you case I need it. Not just a piece. Yeah, that's the way it is. So someone was asking, what are the holes in it? Well, this is for marking your, um, placement lines. This one doesn't have it popped out in the middle. I guess it doesn't matter. Obviously I haven't used it yet. Um, for marking like what I have here, you can see the blue lines. So when I put this in the machine, I know exactly where to line it up. I am going to do a, um, a scan as well, just as a backup. But if you don't have a scanner, you don't have to, you just know this. If you're using a regular hoop, you could put your grid on and make sure everything's straight. I'm a bit lazy, uh, so I didn't necessarily hoop this straight. So they all have a center point and then the alignment. Arrows, yeah. The orientation. Arrows. Yeah, so you can line it up with marks on your hoop. Yeah. I don't have any marks on this hoop. You can get um, the rulers. I don't find it necessary for this because I don't um, use it. There are two sets with these tiles. The first set, starter set, has a USB stick with designs. The other set has the larger tiles, which I use the most, me too. Um, and it has uh, doesn't have the USB set. They give you um, seasonal, I think, designs. But you, and obviously they will be meant for the clear blue tiles. Can you get the tiles with it? Well, when you buy, Judy Quilt just said it. Oh, okay. uh, the first set, the starter set, has designs. But you're going to want designs. They just kind of come with. And if you want different ones, like Halloween, the Christmas ones are really cute, you can go on to the website and download them. And that's what I was talking about, the blue mm -hmm. and the orange. Yeah. So, yeah, I learned that one the hard way. I picked <laughs> one that I really liked. I'm like, hey, it's not for clear blue tiles. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? All right, so this is a little bit awkward, so bear with me. They're bobbin checking you before you go over. Hey, yeah, I got a full bobbin. Thank you. I checked. I just got to get this going on. So we're going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to lose my hoop map to the floor. Jesus. And so when you're hooping this big, 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 big hoop, you need to make sure that you have enough space behind it. It's a big thing. I have nothing behind mine. It's at the edge of a desk. So, which is good. Now, I could have used my hoop guard. I just thought of it right now. And that would hold everything back. So, there we go. First check is to make sure that your top hoop and your bottom hoop are lined up properly. Because it is kind of easy to uh, hoop it off a little bit and you're going to hit something. The second, now mine's pretty neat. But the second check is to make sure nothing is underneath this. Sometimes when you're putting the hoop in and not paying attention, the top part could get folded under and you wouldn't notice. You do not want to do that. You do not want to do that. So these are the designs that I have picked out. I sent them to my machine. There's cat and bat, which is cool. And, okay, so this one is swirlies. It's just plain and simple. This one is really busy. Now, there's bats on the background that I'm using. 
So this one's really busy. It gets bats, ghosts, moons, witches, hats. Oh, cool. Now, this one is cute. It's swirly, which I like, with some candy corn. And this one, which is busy but different than the other one. So when I pulled the designs out, I looked for... for 4x14 four designs because I know they're going to fit. So 1, 2, 3, or 4. Let me know what you guys think. And then I can do the setup and then we can stitch. You're going to let the chat choose? I'm going to let the chat choose Ooh, for, this, for this strip. I like it. Yeah, living on the embroidery edge, I figure. I'm partial to this one because it's candy and I think it's not too busy. And for the outside, I will be using this one. So for the skeletons, um, because I want, I don't want to cover up the skeletons too much. So a little light swirly will work. So uh, one, two, three, and four. So what are we gonna pick? One, 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 three. Uh, three is the one I like. So I'm, I'm kind of cool with that. Three, 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 three. It's always fun when we do this. It's kind of looks like the poop emojis. What does? The candy corn. <laughs> kind of does. Kinda I'll does. give you that. <laughs> it's not though. It's candy corn. Honestly, it's candy corn. So four. It kind of looks like a tie between one and three. <laughs> well, one is going to go on the, the skull dudes. So we could do three on this one. Does that sound good? That sounds good. Okay. There's only a couple people voting and they're mega voting, so <laughs> might have to put them in timeout. <laughs> Don't we get in trouble for that? <laughs> we, we do, I I scolded Misha. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I'm going to return. I went into embroidery mode. Candy corn. I'm going to do a quick scan. Oh, we must have been delayed. Now there's more people voting. Oh, okay. Well, let me do a scan anyways while we're waiting. So, make sure your quilt stays where it should. And remember, it's a big hoop. And it goes farther out than you think if you're stitching on the bottom of the hoop. Now, if I didn't hoop this right, I just kind of slapped it together. I'll show you guys how to fix it. Now, if you don't have a scanner, you just move the design over just simply with the move key to center it right here. Oh, the so, best scanner. Whew. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to move the design. A little bit hard to see, but not too bad. We can see what you're doing. Yeah, a little bit hard for me to see is what I meant. That looks pretty good. A little down from the top, I think. Whoops, not that far down. And I might have to change the angle a little bit. But you can see, you don't have to sit here forever and plan it out, like plan where everything's going to fit. If it goes a smidge over, like at the top, it doesn't matter. Because nobody's like looking close in. They'll see the quilting, but they won't, you know, notice it that much. So I'm going to close this and um, we can do it the old fashioned way, which is, now I gotta find it. Maybe it's in embroidery. Well, that's almost it. I almost had it. Um, oh, we could use the projector too. We could try that. Oh, that'd be cool. um, but there's also a, a like a needle cam thing. Oh, that's a trace. We don't need to trace because I can't see that. Uh, let's try the projector just for fun. We haven't used it in a long time. Please wait a while. Thank you. Uh, we can change the color. 
You know what? I can see it. I don't know if you guys can. You might need to turn the light up. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can see the lines on the orange quite nicely. Not so much on the black, but I can see it. Um, we, we pick up the black more than the orange. Can you see this? Not really. Okay. Pretty, pretty hard to do. So let's go to layout then, and we're going to go to move. And what we're going to do is line up with our marks. So if you don't have the fancy schmancy stuff, this is very doable. And I was going to put on my needle cam to look, but I don't need to. And what you can do, I have it like right over it is just kind of drop your needle. See, I'm a little bit off, so I need to go over a little bit more. See how that works? Pretty so easy. anybody, um, anybody can do it. It's easy enough to do it manually like that. Yeah. You don't need the fancy stuff. No, and it's probably just as uh, fast. It now, seemed to be pretty just as quick, yeah. Down a little bit, but you can see, I don't know how well you can see that, well, what I'm trying to do is stab it, stab the circle. And you know what? This is pretty precise stuff. Um, it doesn't like when I manually put the needle up, even though it was up. So it's pretty easy. Let's try that. Stab. I need to go down a little bit more, so we'll put the needle up key. But see, you can, you can do it. And I think this will be perfect, so, yeah. Can you see that close up? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's exactly where I want it. Put the needle up. So it's e easy either way, however which way you want to do it. Um, it just works. I could have put it up a little bit higher, but... I'm going to do it the way I had it set up. So I have black thread in. I think that'll look the best for this. My design isn't perfectly straight, um, but I don't think it's going to matter. So are there any questions so far? What are we saying? Shoulder, uh, um, um, um. Mm, town we're talking about the weather that is pretty neat yeah it's easy to do if you're using any dime products which have perfect placement you're just going to be putting a sticker there and lining it up with the sticker that's it that's it now i happen to be able to see everything and you see it could go up a little bit more but i don't think it needs to um if i wanted to i could just move it up because I haven't marked any other ones. So I'm looking at the swirlies. So a little bit up now. I don't have it um, lined up, but because I can see it. What's that, Don? Nothing. I was just going to make a comment. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. I was playing with snowman stickers the other day, and I couldn't get it to recognize on white vinyl. It would not recognize the snowman sticker for anything I did. That kind of makes sense, though. It can't see it properly. It's, yeah, it's Sometimes it depends on the lighting. <clears throat> That's another option. You could simply place a snowman sticker underneath the clear blue tile and have it, um, the machine will do all the setting up exactly how you want it. So that's an, lots of ways of doing it. Honestly, I use my scanner. Second would be the way I did it, just lining it up. It's, a lot of times manually is just as quick and easy. I find it just as quick. All you have to do is line it up with a dot. Mm -hmm. I mean, how hard is that, right? Mm -hmm. The hardest part is marking it. So either way, it's easy. So, okay, I think we are ready to stitch this out. Again, I have black thread going on so we can see the design. Now, it takes three minutes to stitch this out. So you can rock this out super quickly with this system. So when this is done, you lift up the hoop. I hang it off the top of the machine like Eileen Roche does. 
move everything, get your um, design, you know, pretty close to the middle, line it up, stitch. So you can really, you know, get your stuff done. It's awesome. So I think we're ready to go. So poop emoji, here we come. <laughs> Now that's all I'm going to see any time I look at it. Oh, I think that looks great with the bats. Now, I don't have the background fabric on my machine or on my um, quilt top. Yeah, that's perfect. You can see it but not quite see it. I love it. I always get a little nervous when I'm starting because it's like, what? What if I did something wrong? But you know what? It looks good. You really can't. No, the black thread looks good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. On this part. So I'm doing it in a strip and then the next strip will be um, the these scully dudes. And I'm just going to do a lighter design because I painstakingly fussy cut them out so they're all the same. So I want to keep it that way. And this is awesome. This, this makes all the difference in your quilts because you can do what you want. You don't have to do anything fancy. They have some geometric designs, stuff like that. I might even you know, take the measurements and do my own designs if I want lines or something. You know, I'm, I might split this cat and bat block in half and use the clear blue tiles to line it up or print and stick templates from Dime. So then I could do half of it and then the other half of it how I want. I also will do an experiment to see if I can do quilting around it on the machine or halfway around it anyways like programming it on the machine so isn't that fast and easy it's awesome so if you were doing uh, endless quilting or end-to-end -end quilting use your biggest hoop start in the middle mark everything stitch move it stitch move it super easy line everything up you are good to go yep that black looks good on everything i don't like it to um show on the back i just like the backing to be plain that works okay if you've got a yeah. yes yes yep it works absolutely fine and I'm not using stabilizer by the way because there's a, they're light designs that I'm doing and if you have the quilt sandwich you don't need to so one less thing to worry about if you want to put on your backing that's fine um, you could either match your bobbin to the back or um, make it stand out now look at that. What do you think, Don? Well, I think it's awesome. I think, I think it. it looks great. You can was, see it enough. Was the design included in the original or separate purchase? I'm not sure she's asking if it came with the quilt kit or... If... I don't remember. That, I know that... they, they had fall ones. I think this one maybe came with the quilt kit. But you can go on the website and check that and see. The, I honestly don't candy, remember. The candy corn? Yes. Yeah. So, now, if I'm... Can you zoom out, Don? I can. I don't have it marked, but we can go do another one. So, I'm just going to hang my hoop and try to watch the thread. And then we'll do something really kooky. We'll go all the way over to where I have it marked. Same design and everything. So this is what I do. So we want it generally lined up here, right? Yeah. And 
you don't have to totally worried about worry about straightness, but how easy is that? But that's how you can basically tell the middle of your hoop is where it has to be. And if you're really good, you know, you can get it the first time. <laughs> and you just pull everything out so it's flat. Oh, those magnetic hoops are awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Isn't it great? And then we can do a scan. Now I can tell this is a bit crooked. So you can either adjust it in the hoop or you can um, adjust it by rotating it. It's super easy. So I generally have it in the middle. So I know we're not going to go over edge or anything like that. So let's do a quick scan. There we go. Scan. And okay. It couldn't be easier, guys. I'd like to flatten this out a little bit. But I like having Captain Jack's face cam. Yeah, it's really helpful, isn't it? See what you're doing on the screen there, I think this is crooked. It looks a little bit maybe, yes. I can I can. Yeah, it's very crooked, my goodness. So, um, that's easy to fix on this machine, which is nice. We're going to go to layout and we're going to go to rotate. That's the one I use anyways, because it has move and rotate with it. So what we want to do is move it, flip it this way a little bit. Uh, a lot of machines have the scanner and I think it's great. So I'm just kind of looking at the edges. Uh, I think we're, we need to go over a little bit. How well can you guys see this? Pretty good. Okay. Well, good. And it's just a matter of, you know, moving it around. So this is where the snowman stickers would come in handy. Now that is looking pretty good for straightness. And you can see the green here. You can see what I'm what I'm doing. If I can make it all kind of match up with that, it should be good. Although it's very forgiving too. See now I have some going over, so I've done it too far. And don't spend forever on it. I I could probably play with it forever. And you don't you don't really have to. So I did it way, way too far way too far shake it up there tank <laughs> did you hear him flapping oh, we heard him. so way too far it wasn't that bad off before Thank so you, now God. i can check and nothing is going over and it looks pretty good i think i'm pretty sure what do you think it, it, it does look pretty good yeah so nothing's over on the edge. And it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It does not have to be perfect. So let's do our checks. Make sure our hoop is proper. Make sure it's a long way away. Uh, make sure nothing is underneath, accidentally underneath. And make sure everything is good. So let's do this. So I didn't go by this today for this one and then the next one you just carry on carry on all the way down you, do as well. you can see my scully guy yeah I really like this so that's how easy it can be no matter what kind of machine you have if you don't have the clear blue tiles you can simply do it with the template or, you know, print out a template and mark a, a dot and that's all you have to line it up with. Super easy. The dime peel and stick ones, super easy. Mark them, put a sticker, unstick it, move it somewhere else. It's awesome. 
so in six minutes, I did some good quilting in the hoop. So if you have questions, now would be a really great time to ask them. And if you think of something after, then head on over to the OML Embroidery University Facebook group and you can ask there and we'll be happy to help. A lot of people have, well not a lot, but some people have these clear blue tile rulers placement things and are very happy with it. I found them in Canada a little bit pricey. I bought them anyways because, just because. Are you doing this as a lab coat? Or a no, it's a wall hanging. hanging. It's, I think it's too narrow for a lab quilt. It's definitely a wall hanging where I can see it. Probably at the top of the stairs if it fits. It might be too wide for that. So, super fun. So just make sure if you're using the magnetic hoop, you just do your checks. Make sure all your stuff is out of the way so you won't, you know, get your machine caught. If you're doing something really big, the quilter, handy quilter, from Dime is a lifesaver. Nisha's asking if you can come up with some edge to edge quilting designs because she likes your own knowledge. Ah, I could do. I The only problem with that is I don't necessarily like the ones that everyone else does. Like, I like this one. It has two little pieces of candy and candy corn and a bunch of swirls. But I don't necessarily like, you know, the baby bottles and different things like that. The bees, it was very sparse. So I don't know if I would produce what everyone likes or is it just a me thing? Well, that's true. I wish I could produce ones to work with the clear blue tiles, but I don't think that Kimberbell will like that too much. So, look at that. I'm so happy at how easy this is. Let's uh, go back to the desk, Dawn, and we'll take a look. Ooh, we'll take a look at our handiwork. I lost my mat. I need it for hooping, but I lost it. So look, isn't that pretty? We did one side and then we did the other side. So if I was carrying on, I would just do a little bit better hooping <laughs> and move it down. But doesn't that add to it? And it's not perfect. It's not perfectly straight or perfectly perfect. Nobody can tell. Nobody can tell. And that kind of, I mean, you want to be as careful as you can but you don't want to spend hours upon hours lining it up or doing whatever because you can see there's pretty quilting. You just don't need to worry about it. So um, I hope you guys will give Quilting in the Hoop a try no matter what machine you have uh, because you can, if you have the right design, you can do it. And Misha, yes, I will do some end-to-end -end quilting designs because I love them too. Cindy King. Hi, Cindy King. Quilting can serve to fudge out some alignment issues in the top, in the quilt top to do with your embroidery machine. Do you baste it? I... Straighten and then quilt over it? Uh, you might make it more noticeable if you do that. I tend to... so. What I've always been telling Don, if you don't cut your pieces out properly, everything's going to be a little bit off. And I'm not that picky about it. It has to be good, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I, I don't bother once it's together. If it's really bad, I pick it apart. But I don't worry about it for the quilting. It, it, there's so much going on. Nobody's going to see your little boo-boo sort of thing. And this, the, the work that we just did, is not 
perfect, but it sure looks good. So you can see it and it just doesn't matter. I didn't go over. If you went over, that would be a mistake because then you would notice it. Uh, as long as the design stayed in um, and it was crooked at the top, if you remember when I hooped it. Mm. Uh, but can you tell? No, nope. no, you can't tell. Nope. So that's what I mean. Don't worry about it as long as it doesn't go over there or, um, you know, it's 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 good. But save yourself a ton of money. You don't need a long arm quilter. You don't learn need to learn how to do free motion quilting. I tried. I I would prefer to do it this way. It takes a lot less time than you think. And it works out really well. I'm so happy with it. And you know, you just sit there and do it. It's easy. You'd be surprised at how um, fast it goes. So once I get this quilted, I will put the black on, uh, black on the back. And, uh, oh, also a good point when you are adding your batting and your backing, make sure you leave a good amount around the edges. Why you may ask? Because we are going to be doing this right we need to be doing this edge and if you cut yourself short if you don't have this extra then it's gonna be super hard to do that's why you wanted so much yeah i wondered yeah well now you know, <laughs> now I know. Uh, for the edges so each side that's what you have so not necessarily this much but uh you know a good few inches and if you're clever, um, when you square everything up, you could uh, save the batting, but you could also then cut up the um, fabric for the binding. So you can be frugal about it. Yeah, I, we don't waste any fabric in this house, especially Tula Pink, but um, also Halloween, because it's awesome. So that's why that's a big thing. So leave everything. And when this is all stitched down and I square it up, I'll have nice straight lines here. You square it up with the ruler and then you can put the binding on and you're done. So those are the main things when you're doing in the hoop quilting. So any questions? Do you have to requilt in the ditch to attach the backing? No, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to. It, it, a lot of people add the backing. I just don't care for the stitching showing through the backing. It's not a big deal. Nobody's going to see it anyways. It's going to be hanging up on my wall. I think if I was making a bed quilt um that are a lap quilt then i would put the backing the backing fabric on and match the thread color yeah, you to hold a little yeah little and it looks more. prettier but because it's a wall hanging i just i just don't i mean there's no particular reason for it lorelei says the rule of thumb is at least four to six inches all the way around I think I probably left a little more than that, didn't I? It just happened to be, Don helps me with these things, but uh, just as much as you can, four to six inches, maybe a little bit more. I knew I was using my big, 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 big hoop. So the way I have it done here is just about perfect. I don't have to worry about it. This isn't coming up at all. Um, some people stitch around the outside, like on their sewing machine, so everything holds. I don't even do that because I find when you quilt it, stuff shifts over. So, yeah, just just make sure. You guys can do this no matter what machine you have. Um, if you don't have the clear blue tiles, then just mark them and stitch and you can do it. Beautiful designs out there. I will make some just for Misha. Misha, tell me what your favorite thing is and I can do it. If quilting with just batting on back, do you get extra fuzz in your bobbin area? I do not. 
I do not, but I do wash, uh, you know, clean it all the time. Has Dawn put up more walls? Do you have a place for your beautiful? <laughs> no, we just created more space by re re uh, moving things around. We way. moved some bookshelves around, so now I have a wall to play with. So you'll see some. My ice cream cones are up there. There's a need a good design. I'll put up the a need a good design flowers, and this, yes. and the rose will be moved. So. Yeah, awesome. We, we we rearranged the living room just so you had wall space. Yeah, of course we did. Maybe when Sam comes over, she can help us with the rest of the furniture. But <laughs> yeah, or you know what I do? This is practice. This I love this one, but I donate every once in a while. I donate all the mug rugs that I make and any small wall hangings or my tester designs that I'm working on. Sam works at hospice and I donate it all to the nurses. I just give it to them and they love it. They love it. It makes their day. It makes them happy. Sam just brings in a pile and they love it. This one is going up on my wall though. Just saying, just saying. So, okay, I want to see what you guys quilt. Big or small, doesn't matter. Show me what you quilt, whether or not you have a scanner, whether or not you have clear blue tiles, uh, perfect placement from dime, the print and stick. We can just do it. I like the trippy spirals and just unusual backgrounds. <laughs> Misha, my sister from another country over there. She likes all the stuff I like. All right, Misha, we'll have a party. We'll have a quilting party. So, yeah, you can ask questions, let me know. But I do want to see what you guys are quilting. So try it, see what you think. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys learned a whole lot about quilting in the hoop and that you'll attempt it yourself and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye everyone